A few years ago, I was traveling with my wife through India. And uh, in an evening, we were watching Hindi TV. Of course, we didn't understand anything. But uh, all, most of the films, they are telling you a love story. And finally, the couple come together. It was a Bollywood film. And um, so in India, you cannot kiss in public. So when the couple came together, there was a cut. And then you were, uh, had a scene with about a dozen women and a dozen men dancing together. And first I was looking at it, and then I was thinking, oh, this looks like similar as Switzerland. And uh, it was uh, nice trees, and then they were zooming out, and then I could recognize a mountain in Switzerland. It was the Titlis. <laughs> you don't believe it, but two days later, a similar scene, a similar film, and a couple came together, a cut, and these times it was the Jungfrau in the Alps. <laughs> so for people in India, when you are in Nirvana, when you are in paradise, you are in Switzerland. <laughs> so we in Switzerland, we really live in paradise. And Swiss people, they are only one per mil of the whole world population. And of course, everybody in the world has the right to live as we live in Switzerland. When, uh, this is my grandson, and he's, uh, this was 18 months ago, and um, a wise man once said, it's not enough just to think about the next three quarter, or the next quarter, it's really you have to think about the next uh, seven generation if you do something. Now, for, for us in Switzerland, as in the Western Hemisphere, we have three problems. One is the peak oil. The other one is our global footprint. And the third one is the CO2 emissions. I will not talk to, about the peak oil. Uh, this is maybe a topic for another talk. I will mainly talk about our footprint. We in Switzerland, as well in Austria, we have a footprint of about four. It means we, have to, we would have four uh, planets to have so that, we can, that everybody in the world can live as we live in Switzerland. In the United States, it's even worse. You need eight planets to live. Now, uh, what can we do about that? If we want to reduce our global footprint, we have to focus first on energy. Energy is almost two-thirds of the global footprint. And second, it's the food. Food is about 20% of the global footprint. So if you, have, uh, you, if you do well with energy and food, then you are on the safe side. Now, again, if we are talking about energy, then we have three points uh, we have to do. We have to work with heating. Heating is consuming about 40% of the energy. We have to talk about mobility, another 40%. And we have to talk about how do we get our uh, electrical power in the future. Uh, Switzerland, at present, we have about 20% are renewable energy, and the rest is oil, gas, and uh, nuclear power. When we look at uh, Europe, you are below 10%. And when you look at the United States, they are below 5% renewable. And the question is, how can we go from this 20% in Switzerland renewable to 80 or 90% renewable. And my talk now, I focus on that. In Switzerland, let's talk about heating. Heating, uh, we have really made a big progress. In, when you were building a, uh, a building in 1970, then we had, you were using about 22 liters of oil per square meter and year. According to the Duday, uh, um, 
standard, it's just 3.8 liters per square meter and, and year. So we have improved by a factor of four to six at similar cost. Then you can add a heat pump, and then you can get again, again, a factor of three to six. I think here in this area, everybody is now doing that. Then people say, yeah, this is nice, but this is much more expensive than the old oil heating. Now, let's look at the real heating cost. And these are the, the, the heating um, of, for a renovated house in Switzerland, the standard house. And uh, it looks a little bit difficult. You have to focus on two lines, on the black line here, that's the oil, the total cost of ownership for the oil heating. And here, that's the, uh, the red line, that's the heating with solar panel and uh, heat pump. And what you can see, about 20 years ago, it was much more expensive to heat with a heat pump. Now these two curves, they came together, and one is going down and the other is going up. And since 2010, it's cheaper to heat with electrical uh, power, uh, with a heat pump, than with oil. So only people, they have too much money today, they will uh, reuse an uh, oil um, heating system. Uh, we have also a challenge in heating, and this is in Switzerland, that's about the renovation rate. In Switzerland, we have at the moment about 78% uh, of, of the buildings still need to be renovated. At present, we're doing that with a rate of 1.1% per year. So it takes about 70 years until we're finished. Now, the government li li likes to in increase that to 2% per year, which take 35 years, and the best would be uh, to increase it to 4% per year. Now, let's talk about mobility. Uh, in the past, we had a change in the behavior in mobility. At 1960, the average weight of a car was about 700 kilograms, and in Switzerland there were uh, 2.4 people sitting in the car in average. Now we have increased, mainly the weight to 1.4 ton, and uh, only 1.3 people are sitting in the car. Now uh, we are moving four times more mass around to get the same mobility as 50 years ago. And four times more mass means also four times more energy. Of course, we, we could gain a little bit, a, a few percent by a better combustion engine, but it's not a factor of four. So we are using much more energy today for the same mobility. What could we do? We could change. We could change that for the future. We could, at a third of our moving is distances below 500 meters. We could do that also by walking. Then another third of the distances we do are below five kilometers. We can do that with the bike. And of course, if you are living in the mountains like here, you can uh, use an electrical bike. Then you can also uh, go up to the mountains. And thirdly, for the rest, you can go with an electrical car. And an electrical car is four times to eight times more energy efficient than a regular car. Now, then people again say, this is too expensive, because the oil is the cheapest thing. But here again, what we have done, we have done a calculation, what are the costs of electricity from a solar panel comparing with the cost of uh, driving with oil. And what you see here, uh, the black curve from oil went up, and the curve with solar energy came down. And about 2010, these curves were crossing, and now it's cheaper to go electrical than to go with oil. 
The only disadvantage is that an uh, electrical car today is still more expensive than a car with a combustion engine. Just to give you an image how powerful the sun is, this is uh, my house here uh, in, in, in the Jura, and you can see I have put there a solar panel on the roof, and with that solar panel, I can supply 10 Teslas for the whole year. So you, everybody has some roof in, in their house, and I think we can really become your, our, our, all, uh, our own uh, energy provider. Now, there is another question. If everybody, everything is going uh, into electrical, do we have in, enough electricity for the future? In Switzerland, we have about 40% of our electricity is uh, nuclear. And in, the, in Austria, you don't have any nuclear power. Uh, in Europe, you have a lot of coal and nuclear power. And the first question is, can Switzerland do it with 100% renewable electrical energy? And to find out, we were doing a simulation. We were looking on the demand of a year, and then we were uh, calculating how much energy do we get from sun, wind, biomass, and water. And this looks a little bit crazy. What you can see, the yellow is the, the sun that uh, shines, and then the, uh, uh, the dark blue at the top, these are our dam, hydraulic, uh, dam storage in the mountains. And of course, you have to use them so that it fits all together. And the nice thing is Switzerland can go 100% renewable. There are three other countries that can do the same thing. One is Austria, one is Sweden, and one is Norway. How is it with the rest? How is it with the whole of Europe? Europe, of course, doesn't have enough uh, time storage because Europe is too flat. So what can we do then? We have also made a calculation and we came out that it is possible for Europe, this is the curve for Europe, to switch off all nuclear power, all coal uh, uh, power, and just using uh, renewable and in addition a little bit of natural gas. The brown part here is natural gas. The natural gas supports the system with, uh, with additional energy when it is needed. But you don't have to build uh, additional uh, natural gas uh, power plant because you have already enough to do so. Now, what is the results if you do something like that? The results will be Europe at the moment, they have, uh, or Switzerland at the moment, we are using five to six tons of CO2 per year. If we want to be sustainable, we have to go down to one ton per year. And this we can reach with this strategy. When you look at Europe, you are a little bit higher. You are eight to 10 tons per year. And you can da uh, come down to 1.5 ton. That's already an advantage. And the US, they are using at the moment 15 tons per year. But also they can come down below two tons per year. So from the global footprint, this makes sense. Then people are asking, yes, but let's talk about money. How is it? Now, when you look at the past, the prices of oil, they have increased in the whole world of about 6% per year constantly, even if you have up and down. But in average, when you look at average, the prices have increased, and they will increase in the future as well. And if you go with the number of 6% per year, then what can you see? If we, don't, if we don't do anything in Switzerland, we will almost double our cost for energy by 2035. If you don't do anything in Europe, 
then you will spend uh, more than double as much money for your energy than today. And Europe can, can save several hundred mil billions of euros a year if you really go in this direction. And the other advantage is that you are becoming independent of the, the countries they deliver the oil and gas, and you put that the people, they are working for the future, this work is done here. So there, are, there is no reason not to go in this direction. And I think we should really go in focus of our next generation, we should really go uh, into renewable energy. So let's, uh, oops, let's build our vision and make it into reality. Thank you very much. <laughs>